Life is a miracle and deep love. Let's have some fun. What do you say? I was feeling a little ungrateful today, and then I called my friend Hildegard, who was depressed. She's 90 years old, and it's a limited world. She's lonely, and I said, you know what? We've got to live fully engaged, fully grateful for the light that comes through the window, the eyes that we can see, the food that we taste, the freedom that we experience. Let's be grateful, and I feel so much better now. Interesting when you open up your heart. I didn't really want to go on this uh, Thursday adventure Tess invited me to go on where we go to uh, an art festival. And I invited Hildegard and she doesn't really want to go. And I said, well, we've got to get outside of our comfort zone. There's Hildegard, beautiful Hildegard. What an amazing woman. Amazing model. Was a big model back in the day. Okay, let's get this day started. So Douglas got me this. I said, I want it really, I said, my teeth are so yellow right there. And he go, I said, I really want this. I said, this last night. And it was just delivered at 10.09 this morning. He has it plugged in and charging up. They were this color. And now they're going to be white. It was $20. And I'm not making any money off this. So I, mean, I have no Patreon. I have no sponsor. I'm not nothing. But it is this. And... Well, we'll take a look and see what it does. See, here's, this isn't even as dark as I usually get it. I'm out of cocoa, so I'm sort of making tea cocoa. Anyway, it's a good day. It's a good day in my garden. It's not real, but it sure is pretty. Okay. You eat your doggy food, huh? I'm feeling frisky. I'm feeling excited. I'm going to work on um, Lynn Miller's picture and see if I can get it put together. Uh, of that, Douglas and I together. Here's the OOTD. Besties weekend. This said corn, but corn is CIA. I don't eat corn. Corn? No. CIA? No. Well, I don't know. Oh, the bat. There's the good ones and there's the bad ones. Is there a good CIA? I don't know. Anyway, have a lovely day. Did anybody tell you they love you today? Oh, 10 times? Good. <laughs> okay. Douglas playing with the kitty down there. Special effects. I got no makeup on. I don't have all my extensions on. I'm doing my hair, so I thought I'd come out early. But I did hear that if you wear sunglasses, your skin doesn't really realize the sun situation and you get burned more easily. So, yeah. You don't want to wear sunglasses out in the sun. It's not good for you. Plus, you need the UV rays, certain sunlight rays that go through the iris indirect and you need that but since i have no makeup on <laughs> i put on my modesty glasses i can't be naked i need modesty glasses right me so yeah we're having a good time we got up early i'm gonna do my hair today and oh my god okay i like it i'm a white apparition and it's an apparition something bad okay i'm a white uh, spirit yep 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 okay so it's a good day it's a good day let's see if we get this yep 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 Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I gotta film a little bit at night out here because I wanna use it in my movie. So I know I'm gonna need this footage because I may not live here and I might not have access to it. I used some of the other footage from my other uh, apartment in the last movie, a gazebo. I told you about the crazy gazebo that's like, I made it flipping all around. <laughs> it's a real fun scene. Anyway, yeah, the half alien, half human was in there. And then the lead, the romantic lead comes in after he's been beaten up by kind of a demonic, <sighs> Illegal, and we're talking alien illegal. <laughs> Not supposed to be on Earth. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, that's what happens in the movies. And that's what happens in real life too, kind of. <laughs> in a way, that's what we're finding. All right, we're gonna exercise. We're gonna exercise. Here's the OOTD. Can you see that? Here's the OOTD. And for Kayla Gangs. And yeah, there you have it. Hiya. Jess, look up here. Hi, gorgeous. Glad pants, little bleat bead. There we go. Glad you came to breakfast. This is what's for breakfast. No, the they egg, get nothing. Eggs look fluffy. Douglas made the eggs. You want the treats, but it's not time yet. You gotta wait. Okay. Kitty wants to go outside. Kitty wants to go outside, don't you, Kitty? So I was just thinking, you know, David Reno, Nino Rodriguez was talking about how 
people show an inappropriate amount of love to their animals. And I agree, disagree more. Agree more. No, that was a Freudian slip. I cannot disagree more. Because um, when a man shows love to an animal, it, it's easy, like I was just saying. It's easy to love a queen and go, oh, she's hot, she's sexy. Oh, I love her. Hi, baby. What are you doing? Oh, that love, love, love. I'll show lots of appreciation and love to a man when he's excited by a beautiful woman. But to show Anne a love to a stinky little dog that has nothing to offer but everything to receive. Let's see what's going on. Oh, nothing. Okay. What are you barking at? There's nobody out there. Are you just yapping away? What are you doing? So uh, that's what I'm saying is that, you know, uh, this girl, I mean, this woman said that they had indoor outdoor kennels and they had to go out with the dog when it pooped and they fed it at the table. Well, I do that. Maybe it's excessive for some people to have kids. They're like, get that dog away because we got enough kids at the table. Come on, B. Blue, you want to go outside? Blue, you want to go outside and, and, and check it out? I think Blue wants to go outside. Blue. Come on, Blue. You check it out? And go outside over here? 14 year old boy, they're like, they kind of treat animals harshly because they haven't really developed, you know, and um, gotten that sense of self and that sense of security. It's like, I mean, we were like that with our dog. We were just like, sugar, get over here, whatever, you know, and then later on you realize, no, this is a sacred creature, a sacred cat, a sacred dog, and um, they're gifts from God. And the, when you love the animal, everybody else gets the vicarious enjoyment of the fallout from that love. So it's never uh, overdone. Come here. Now, I did see a video where this guy, his father was seeing his daughter going to a prom and she was all dressed up. And, and uh, he was giving more attention to the dog, but I understood it because the dog doesn't understand she's dressed up and beautiful. He's just like, hi, my, my, my favorite's here and he needs me to greet him and come here. Wanna go outside, Blue? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, well then. <laughs> so enough of my yapping. Enough of my yapping. I'm a beautiful, beautiful princess. Oh, oh, TD. Oh, oh, TD. Oh, oh, TD. Documenting this teeth whitening thingy. These are the teeth. Here is the thingy. Whoop, activated. I just can't even see that. How do I? So we have these, um. Okay. There we go. You gotta take a before picture. I do. You did? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Hello, you guys. Yes, I'm still getting lights because it's important to get lights. Uh, I didn't put on my makeup because I wanted to beat the heat. In the desert, you gotta beat the heat. So, uh, I was listening to something and it said, here's the OOTD. Let's see. Leggings, orange, going with the orange and navy theme. Orange is gorgeous. So, um, I was listening to David Nino Rodriguez, and he's a truther, and on YouTube, and he was saying uh, that, <laughs> what was he saying? It was important. Oh gosh. I thought of it. <laughs> that you need to be your own person, and you need to approve of yourself and not look to others. Just because they're part of the club and they don't want me in the club doesn't mean that I'm not worthy of being in the club, doesn't mean that I'm not, you know, and besides, when I was at uh, college and, um, and none of the sororities wanted me because of my learning disability, I guess, I don't think it was my personality, but it could have been. <laughs> but uh, I think it definitely was my learning disability. They only want smart people. You know, it's part of the secret handshake uh, society. My dad told me that, those little ducks. So I was really lucky that I didn't get involved with it. And um, come this way, Beanie. But, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. But uh, I didn't get in the sorority. And then another one, Fine New wanted me, but uh, she was my roommate and she was really, I don't know, she had long platinum blonde hair, the color of my hair naturally, big blue eyes, and she rode the horse mascot. She was a straight A student. I should have probably done it, but you know what? I'm glad I didn't because I had freedom to uh, pursue. I couldn't study and do all that partying and stuff, just that socializing stuff. I didn't have the stamina to do all that. I had to study five times harder than everybody else just to make what they made. My sister didn't even study and she didn't make a B. I had to really study hard. But uh, yeah, facts, facts. Facts they make up that we don't even need to know. 
uh, the history. These elite, these secret people that run the world. Uh, yeah, they fill us full of BS. But anyway, uh, they're not running the world anymore. Guess who has the leg up? That's right, the good guys. <laughs> the good guys have a leg up. So, yeah, you know, I, I crave, you, you know, I heard something that you fixate on what causes you pain. Because it's kind of like, oh, I want to do this better. I want to fix this. I want to solve this problem. So family causes us pain. And even though if we were really around it, we would be like, God, I can't wait to get away from this person. Uh, you know, we still crave it. Although I did have a really good time with my sister and my uh, sister's husband and my high school friend, my junior high friend. My, I think he might, I think I was in grade school. We got together, my friend Jenna, and uh, that was fun. Anyway, here's the OOTD. I've got some orange going, orangey glad, orange earrings, kind of orangey red. And uh, we're back now. I watched the kitty. You guys didn't see that, but it was really cute. He wanted to go. It was so cute. Really cute. And we got to go outside, and it was nice. Thankfully. I mean, think about it. If if uh, some rebellious people, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, like let's say women, we want to vote. We want to. We don't want to wear a big long skirt all the way to the floor. We don't want to wear, uh, you know, buttoned up to here. You know, it's like that rebellious. You know, I broke. I I grew up. Uh, broke. I don't know why that came out. I grew up in. Um, the 60s and it was all about you know sexual freedom and we wore little mini skirts and just underwear I mean we basically didn't even have a bottom on and that was our norm and I see an older woman coming with really short shorts she was she grew up in that time period there's no shame we just that's all we knew uh, you know Buffy on um, at Shirley Temple before that so really short skirts were you know the norm and they still are today pretty much girls are really I have a lot of freedom, and I think that's a good thing. If we're all buttoned up under a, a perfect a sheet of uh, nobility and honor, then how can we ever be free enough to ever make love? I mean, some some uh, cultures make love through a hole in the sheet because the filth of the body. I mean, it's just like, so there has to be varying degrees, and there has to be freedom. Now, it's Memorial Day, and there's flags right there. I don't know if you can see that right there. Got to be careful flags flying. We have a lot of flags flying in our neighborhood, but there's extra flags flying, and it's Memorial Day. And this is, wow, when you really think about the pain and the suffering that these people go through for our freedom, I mean, yeah, they sign up for it, uh, but I don't think they always know what they're really getting fully into. But I, I'm um, honoring those people that suffered for our freedom, for what we have, and uh, bravely so. You know, it's really... Uh, here, here's a weird story for you. I think I might have told you this before, but there was a, a sniper that killed more Japanese, I think Japanese, uh, enemy. Uh, he, was a, he was a sniper for the government, you know, for the military in wartime, doing his duty. And he was honored because he was unbelievable. And he was called White Feather. And uh, come up here, come up here. But when he was doing, this is kind of weird, when he was doing a service afterwards to go and see a, a mentally ill patient, somebody who was in, you know, post-traumatic stress, and they didn't realize he was that mentally ill, and, they, and the guy shot him. Not exactly friendly fire, but, you know, it's like, wow. Uh, you know, so you just don't realize. I even heard, like, recently, and I think this has to do with the deep state, but um, that uh, at the training military camp, somebody... A, a guy was killed and it's just like there's something fishy there so um, I mean usually that's not the case but anytime you you fight there's a risk and we're honoring these people uh, the sacrifice and I see down there there's a rainbow flag I mean it's just like oh I'm gonna be right I'm gonna be what I want and I'm gonna do what I want and I'm gonna you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a deer I want antlers and I'm a bunny rabbit <laughs> Okay, you got a beard and you're teetering around in high heels and you're a lady. We'll call you a lady. Okay, you can use the ladies' bathroom. Just keep your hands off the kids. 
just, you know, there's order and logic in God's world, and we have to honor that. So uh, that's it for now. Tess is going to read a letter that came to her from a person that was a friend of hers before. I'll let her tell you about it, but it sounds very interesting. She went through a lot, and she went to both hell and heaven. So I think this is really going to be fascinating. Okay. 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 So there, this is the person that wrote to Tess. Hi to the people. Let's give them a little Hi. eye contact. I guess I'm sorry I missed your phone call. Sounds like you've gone through a lot over the years. I have to tell you, this year has been the most interesting and most challenging by far. Two days after my birthday, which was March 2nd, I fell ill and was weak. I work for Amazon. I have been since 2021. It's a different type of job and skill set that I'm accustomed to, uh, 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 property management. After work, I came home and felt really tired. Light was very sensitive to me and noise gave me a headache. I called my friend Brenda and asked her to call Mark because I wasn't feeling too well. Mark's her husband. He's a real sweetheart too. Mark thought I just wanted him to come home but took the chance to come home and luckily he did because I was very, very sick. He took me to Henry Mayo Hospital in Santa Clarita, which is where we live now, and we found out I was septic and was suffering a stroke with showers of embolisms in my brain spreading the sepsis around my body. Uh, Henry Mayo induced me into a coma for about three and a half weeks. They couldn't do anything about my issue because they didn't have a cardiology department. So Mark called UCLA Hospital, where my original doctors uh, are from cardiology, and they life flighted me to Henry Ma uh, from Henry Mayo to UCLA. On the last week of March, after a week of being in the hospital at UCLA, I finally came out of my coma. My sister flew out from the East Coast to visit me, and it was very challenging, I have to tell you. I had a deep experience when I was in a coma. I crossed over and met with the devil and God, and he's real, and I have to tell you that if you're not saved, it's best that you're saved now while you're alive. Uh, not to sound too religious, but I have to tell you, this was a real experience that I can't even exp uh, explain to have anybody understand unless they're in my situation. I then stayed in the hospital until April and was placed in Century City Rehabilitation Center for stroke victims. I had to basically learn how to walk again, uh, use a fork, and, and climb stairs. It is very challenging um, and hard. And then it wasn't until April, the first week of April, that I felt very weak and tired that I had Mark take me back to the hospital. And I went to the ER, 50 range, so they readmitted me into the hospital, and, and then I had emergency open heart surgery the first week of May. Intuitive, continue to do well, and I, I pray for you, and I'm glad that we kept in touch. Take care of yourself, well, and we love you. For people my age, I thought about getting my license again, not because I necessarily needed the money, but because I thought I could donate my skills and services to help people who couldn't afford to have decent uh, uh, dental care. Okay, go ahead but not at the expense of being, uh, uh, quote, jabbed, unquote, with a substance that I believe in my heart is a little, uh, is little more than a poison and, and, and a blight upon our country. I have witnessed indirectly the death of uh, four younger people, also heart, through heart attack. And it's really going on around us all the time right now. It's just because we have a compromised media that uh, uh, that, that we are not aware of just how many millions, and I mean millions of people have already uh, died from these. And if something isn't done... That's fabulous, Tess. Thank you so much for and sharing they're, that. And they're both clean and sober now. So... Uh, so... Oh, okay. In 4K, you guys know my light dress. to the water trickle into this glass and it sounded so good in my footsteps and him crunching the kibble. Life is such a sensual experience just audibly. Get a little bit of hair. Oh, it's a misty, misty world. Where's your treat, huh? Where is your treat? It's game for you. Okay. <laughs>
or the storyboards in the movie. I took some photos. I do the storyboards so that they can see what the special effects will look like. And there was this emotional scene where she's thrown in the bushes. So I have a photo of that that goes in the movie. And that's what all this is, uh, photographing that, LOL. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> Wear pom poms to the dentist. You must wear pom poms to the dentist. I just got a ah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh my god. I will text you later. Bye. Oh, I was going to take a photo, but here's my baby. There's a baby. I just got back from the dentist. I was going to take a photo, but my face is kind of... Ah. Hi! I just took out my starlight. I'm Douglas Gaming. I'm a star. I'm a star. I'm a legend in my own mind. Uh, let's see. Oh, hi there. Uh, hi there, kitten. What you doing? Wow, Tracy, thank you for the invite for June. I will find out if what's possible. Mm, that would be nice. Oh, let's see. What? Um, yeah, there were a lot of things here. Um, I'm glad you liked the letter and the note. Uh, say social anxiety. I wasn't really list picking that out. Uh, I was listening to that girl, though. I really like her just for, like, when I want to meditate or rest or nap. I kind of put her on and it slows me down after work. And then I woke up and that was playing. So I thought, well, that might be good for Parker. Oh, my God. <gasps> Temporary fit in. Uh, and then, then I'll get my crown. Two crowns. Oh. Oh. Anyway, let's see. I'm going to do this in sections, so let's see. What else? Did we have so many problems as a young adults? I think the young people today are under a lot more um, influence than we realize through. And, you know, Lynn told me that you can't handle this kind of talk and so that to keep it very superficial. But I do think that the males are singled out. And uh, demasculinated, I don't know how you say that, feminized, uh, uh, villainized, it, it, it's toxic to be a mask. man, they're very confused, and I think that they're under a lot of pressure through the music, the movies, the TV shows, the comic books, the, you name it, uh, magazines, everything. So they're under a lot of stress. Hold on, I'll send you more. more. What happened to me back in the day was... Um, uh, you know, I was reading Siddhartha, which Mom gave me, which is spiritual... And um, I was trying to be very selfless and help mom. There was a lot of pressure. Mom was kind of picking on me. And um, uh, I was in a very euphoric state. And mom was really attacking me um, for being euphoric, for being happy. And I was trying to mend her carpets and get up early and help dad and, you know, eat the proper things. And I was dressing very plain. And she was like, didn't like it. She didn't like that I didn't have style or fashion. I was just wearing like khaki pants and a white top and very little makeup. And she was just like, ew, I look like a scullery maid. She didn't like that. She was kind of picking on me. So I think I kind of uh, I was misunderstood and put in a mental hospital and medicated. And that's really where it went low. It really went off. Uh, but I was listening also to um, the night that it happened was to, um, I remember uh, Star Trek, which is part of the CIA mind control, and they have frequencies in it, so I don't wonder if that had something to do with it, but I know you don't believe that, but anyway, a little cocoa. Hold on, I'll send some more. Um, Hold on, I'll send more. Would I come in June? I did. Lynn didn't mention that I was going to be on a vacation. She said there would be some sadness in August, so I don't know who's going to pass or what's going to happen in August. I thought, is it husband? I, you know, he's older. Um, 
uh, I really don't know. It could be just a little something, you know. I really don't know. She said, saw some sadness in August. So I really got to check with her and see if it's a good time for me to go. If we can get along and have a good time. Uh, I certainly would love that. You were so sweet to offer that to me. And if you want to come out here, let me find out if we're compatible at this time. <laughs> We just, we just might not be compatible, and I don't, I don't want to stress out our relationship, you know. I did have fun in Santa Fe, though. I was talking about you with my dentist, and I said, "Oh my God, we laughed so much." Uh, you're very fun. I had so much fun with you and Mark, and you know, I just wanted to. So I was listening to this woman, Diane Cannon, and she is a uh, very was a hypnotist for 40 years and she would age aggress people and she noticed themes throughout thousands and thousands of hypnotherapist patients and there were similarities and then one of her patients tapped into a student in Nostradamus's class and Nostradamus started communicating with her and told her what the quadrains meant and told her what the future held and what does that have to do with well everything we kind of have a Nostradamus on earth at this time I know you find that hard to believe but you'll find out when you find out that the president truly is John McIntyre. He's going to be our next president, 33 years old. And Lynn sees it. She is kind of an Nostradamus. And she saw, told me back when we lived uh, at Heritage Palms, uh, she told me, she, said, she goes, I'll give you a free reading since she drove me all the way to uh, Los Angeles. And I was like, thank you. And in it, and I was shocked. I was shocked. She didn't tell me that there was a possibility of him not being completely like Eric. But recently she said, if he does not drink, he can have a normal life. He wants to have children and, and have love and marriage and all of the good things. So uh, staying away from alcohol, I think that's that's the one thing she said. And I said, well, uh, what marijuana. She goes, well, yeah, of course, marijuana too, but alcohol. So uh, it's that simple. I believe he's going to do it. I believe he's going to choose the right thing. And I believe these people are going to get through to him. Um I love him so much. He's such an amazing human being. He's so funny and so smart and so amazing. And I'm so sorry you had to deal with it. And Lynn did see that this was going to come about. And she said, you were going to be very instrumental in helping him get through this. So uh, it's God's will, ultimately, though, uh, for whatever reason. We all have lessons to learn. And that's what Diane Cannon said. Hold on. One more. Yeah, Diane Cannon said... You see this person and they get their cheerleader and they get married to a doctor and they have wonderful smart children and they have amazing grandchildren and everything goes smoothly and their life is just like they're going to France and they're going to Europe and they have this wonderful life. And um, she said that's kind of a resting place because there's lessons to be learned. There's life. And, you know, I wouldn't wish a learning disability on anybody. I wouldn't wish a uh, mental illness on anybody. I wouldn't wish, you know... Uh, blindness on anybody but it certainly is an interesting life that i've had as a result of having learning disability i want to be a lawyer and a doctor and thank god i'm not today i love doing the art i love doing this movie i'm uh, lynn said that it was going to be a very uh we're going to produce it ourselves and uh we we produced it on a shoestring budget and our neck our last movie she said people are going to really see it so it's exciting to do something where you're going to connect with the world make a difference in the world and it's fun uh, being on a movie set is one of the funnest things in the world. And uh, I just talked to a movie director when I was dating, uh, not dating, but uh, talking to a possible guy. But he made horror movies, and I don't want anything to do with the guy that's making horror movies. He's overweight, too. So anyway, enough about him. But I, I let's say prayers are answered by God. And um, I'm so glad he's liking the groove, and he's liking it. Yeah. Uh, it's hard when all those emotions get bottled up. It's hard and stressful and pain. It's very painful. And um, he's got to learn how to cope with his feelings. He's autistic on top of it. Uh, he's a drug addict and an alcoholic. And um, so he's very brilliant. And what a brilliant mind. So let's pray for that brilliant mind to be used by the medical. He's going to invent something. He's going to do something great. But even if he doesn't do something great, if he has a peaceful, productive, happy life, good enough. He doesn't have to be brilliant, but he is. He is brilliant. And he's cute. Oh, my God, he's so cute. Um, so let's see what else. One more thing. When mom passed, I had a dream and I thought it was about Tess because there was an injection and I thought she was shooting meth at the time and I cried and weeped and was like, oh my God, because I never expected her to die. And it was about mom because there's injection and, 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 and then she was dead. So 
I'm, the reason I'm going to say this is because Lynn told me, if you do not realize the person that you're in love with is going to die, you will die with them. So she said, you need to always remind yourself that this is going to happen in your life. And then when it happens, you will not die with them. I want to make them, you know, more than likely, if we stay together, she also sees a David coming in and possibly going with David. But she's going to be getting into a drug rehab soon. And so who knows? Um, but let's take today. I love you, sweetheart. That's it for now. Mwah. Big hugs. And I'll, I'll talk to you about June. I got to ask Lynn. I got to find out. I love you. And thank you for that invite. You are just such a sweetheart. <laughs> we can have some fun. Bye. Love you anniversary my sister is so funny she sent me a text with this funny jib jab thing and she says she doesn't need a psychic to know something i just think it's really funny psychics are amazing though <laughs> you are so funny Mimi, is she so funny is this this oh crap i just pulled it across my electronic face zapper thing i think i'm gonna be electric I haven't put my hair extensions in. Um, we're just, uh, cabinet doors open, uh, vitamins happening, uh, life is good. <laughs> that flippity jippity thing, I want to send that to Lynn. You know, you're going to be friends with Lynn, by the way. She sees her visiting there. I mean, she doesn't need to. She she, she reads for the celebrities and the richest people in the world. I, they, she, she doesn't need to come see, visit us, but uh, evidently she sees that happening. I don't know how far in the future, but yeah. So uh, anyway. <laughs> You're so funny. I love you. <laughs> Wait, we gotta go now. Okay, say bye. Uh -huh. Love you. Hello. I've been waiting my teeth. There's the thing. There's the thing. Okay, here's OOTD wearing some satin Betsy Johnson from way back in the day. Yeah, it's wrinkled, but you know what? So am I. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> What's new? Okay, been working on the movie, storyboards, and uh, backgrounds. Right, Beanie? And the look of things. And uh, talking to my sister, we had our uh, we had our anniversary. I'll include some of the sweet moments. Well, not sweet moments, but sweet photos and pictures right here. And you know, it's funny how you can kind of fall in love with somebody over again. Okay. Oh, I don't have my seatbelt. Um. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So, um, do do. Yeah. I, I mean, I, not that I ever fell out, fell out of love with Tess, but you know, when she's really in the depth of her misery of drug addiction, it's hard to love somebody because they're just so. I got a lot of blush there. Welcome to my world. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think she's getting ready to pull up. You know, the plane's going down for like a this kind of tailspin and a or just flying bumpy ride, bumpy ride, more like that, bumpy ride. It wasn't just a full-on airdrop crisis. It was more like a bumpy ride. But she's, you know, injuring herself, her judgment's off, just like whacking as hard as you can into a net that's only a few feet away. I think it was a recipe for disaster, so it doesn't surprise me that something happened. And then she hit her leg, leg, leg again! Uh-huh, she hit her leg again. So let's see if I can pull in here and there. What would be easier? Let's turn around. Hold on. I tried to get the red burn. I didn't get the red burn. Let's see, oh, TV. Lots of geese and ducks. Um, so yeah, this one person that I just thought was, oh, I just love him, he's so great. He didn't, this one minister didn't respect me. Just, and I heard was a drug addict. And I knew he was, look at these ducks. They feed him so they come up. Hi you guys, you're getting so big, you're so cute. Hi there you are. Oh, you're so cute, huh, you guys? Hi. You're so cute. So, morning. Come on, come on. They're gonna say, oh, yeah. So, this guy, I knew he was a compulsive overeater, but then I heard, oh, no. Not only that, he has his little party gummy bears, and, you know, and it's like these people stand up there and be an example of how we're supposed to live our lives. Yeah. Oh, compulsively overeat. It spoke pot, you know. It's like, uh, yeah. Come to church so you can learn about debauchery and uh, the chalk cherry pie. We like to eat here at our church, and it's like, you know, it's always you know when your when your idols fall off of their pedestal, 
It's always a little bit, oh my God, a little bit shocking. But anyway, I didn't come here to bash my shattered idols. They've already bashed themselves. No, quiet. Hi, how are you? You're what? Oh, excellent. So are we. Not this week. Yeah, and, and next December, not this December. Hey, I, I love your heart belt. That's so cute. And your rose shoes. Those are cute. Hi, Sarah. Oh, my goodness. Here's the cutest thing. Yes, you are. Oh, my goodness. You're still babysitting? You're still walking? Yes. A lot of, lot of oh, no, you mean the other dog. Yeah, know. yeah. No. Okay, see you next time. <laughs> there she goes. There goes my friend. English friend. Well, acquaintance. Always a friend. Neighbor. Neighbor. There you go. So it's a good day. Uh, and not to be judgmental. I mean, you know, people judged me my life. They didn't live my life. They don't know my life. And the same with me judging this other person who's doing drugs. Um, I wanted to say, Beanie, uh, that's about it. <laughs> I'm glad we're up today. Uh, yeah, it was exciting having a little more peace and a little more love in our home. Um, feeling love, feeling love for Tess. Seeing her in a different light. Oh, there's that red bird again. It must be fascinated with us. Red bird, red bird. Did you capture it for a second? There it goes. It's up there. Much. Um, my black eyes almost gone. What? Oh, don't worry about it. What? Oh. Uh oh. Infraction. Infraction. What does? Hey, hey. Oh, oh yeah. It goes straight into my eye. Are you kidding? Yeah. Really? Yep. Yep. Well. I had my temporary fall off because I flossed and they told me don't do it. There goes little blue. They told me don't do it. I did it and yeah. And that Tess went and got me temporary glue because she was a dentist. She understands these things. I said, oh, I'll just go. And she went away for t 15 minutes maybe. Came back. Maybe I don't think it was 20. Came back and I re-cemented it in. Right? Yeah. I it's 62, seeing a lot of lines and a lot of big pores, and it's like, oh, he's very excited, aren't you? He liked it all, so I think it's good. I like it. Come here. You're a star, and you're a legend in your own mind, like me. We're all legends in God's mind. Forever. Forever. That's P-O-N-C-E-Y, I think. Ponce. It's a cat, and he goes in the cart, and his master takes him for joy rides. Become a fan of Debo Love. Uh oh. <laughs> Did anybody tell you they love you today? We love you. We do. The future looks very bright, very bright indeed. Wow. Miraculous. Truly. Miraculous.